Did you know that in China, people have like little dumpling parties? Everybody gets together, they make dumplings together. So it only makes sense that we're doing this together. Here, I'll help. I'm gonna help you out. I'll recover the lost souls. Hey there, I'm Sola El Whaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. So it's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? I feel like everybody has a favorite dumpling spot that they are willing to go to battle to defend with their friends, right? Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But who doesn't love meat and veggies tucked inside of little pillowy bundles of dough? So today we're gonna explore the history of ancient Chinese dumplings and try to recreate one of the original ones. The first dumpling is said to have been made by the legendary Chinese physician Zhang Zhongxing around 200 AD as a way to cure frostbite. So the original dumplings history is a little bit more legend than fact at that point, but that won't stop us from attempting to recreate it because its original use is so interesting. Almost every culture has their own kind of dumpling, right? Like pierogies, ravioli, the list is endless. It is commonly accepted that these dumplings were developed separately, maybe even at the same time, rather than from one original dumpling. Today we're gonna make Jiaozi dumplings, which you will definitely recognize, maybe from Chinese New Year celebrations. Okay, so we're gonna start by making our dumpling dough. So here I have some all-purpose flour, and to it we're gonna add hot water. Hot water doughs are really fun. They're very easy to work with, so someone explained it to me in a really cool way. When you use hot water, what happens is the starch swells really fast, so the starch gets first dibs on the water rather than the gluten. So you end up with a dough that's a little bit more supple, a little bit more soft, perfect for rolling into these thin dumpling wrappers. When you start with cold water, the gluten gets dibs first, so you end up with a more glutinous dough, which is what you want for bread. So here I've got hot water, we're gonna use chopsticks to bring it together into a shaggy mass. Here, let me go this way. Here we go. Look at that. Nice and steamy. And then we're just gonna bring it together into a shaggy mass, which is a word you hear a lot, and that just means that everything is moistened, but we're not like kneading it into a dough yet. And then we're gonna just let it rest for 15 minutes, and that's gonna help the starch suck up all that water and be ready for kneading. So I guess I need a little bit more. We wanna make sure everybody is moist. And that's all we're looking for at this stage. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna try and recreate Zhang Zhongxing's dumpling recipe. And the legend has it, he was walking home from work one day, going through his village, and he noticed that a lot of people were suffering from frostbite on their ears. So what he did was, he took mutton, mixed it with pepper and medicinal herbs that he knew were good for curing frostbite, and then he mixed it into these little scraps of dough and handed it out as treatments for people. And that's how you get these dumplings. And if you see it, the shape does kind of look like little ears, so it totally makes sense. Okay, so this has rested for 15 minutes and it's not gonna look very different but that rest just makes it a little bit easier to knead because the starch had time to just like get to know the flour. So now I'm gonna get in here and knead until it gets nice and smooth. And actually, should I turn it out? Nah, I'll stay in the bowl. We'll keep it tight today. So we want this to come together into a nice smooth dough and then we're gonna let it rest for another hour before we start rolling out our dumplings. Okay, I feel like I need tall sola. It's kind of, crazy how easy it is to make dumpling wrappers. I don't make dumplings a lot, but I really do enjoy making the wrappers because, I don't know, it's just really fun. It's really fun rolling out tiny little circles. Great way to spend the weekend. Now the first written recipe for a dumpling dumpling comes to us from Apicius. Now that's the cookbook where we got our boar sauce for that we did in the garam episode. Oh, that's bone. <laughs> Let me go from this side. There we go. Mm -hmm. But that's more of like a dumpling that's boiled in water. You know, kind of like a gnocchi or a spetzel. It's not filled, it's not a filled noodle. The first recipe for a filled noodle, which is similar to the kind of dumpling we've got today, comes to us from a medieval cookbook called The Form de Curry. And that's where we got our apple pie recipe. Ooh, that held together really well. I thought it might just all sploosh out, but definitely not. 
Now, I don't think that means that the first dumpling comes to us from the Romans or from med medieval times. Those are just where it was first written, you know? The Romans, they write everything down. Now, Shang Shung Sing is considered one of the best physicians in Chinese history. He's kind of like the sage for modern Chinese medicine, and a lot of his work is still referred to today. So this is feeling nice and smooth, and now I'm gonna just set it aside to rest for about an hour so that it's chill enough, relaxed enough for me to roll it out. Boom. I'm gonna let this stay covered. Whenever you're working with dumpling dough, make sure it stays covered because it will dry up very quickly. That's it for tall sola. <laughs> so you need to readjust. <laughs> Sorry. While my dough rests, I'm gonna start working on the filling. So first, I'm gonna pound up these medicinal spices. So in Zhang Zhengxing's medicinal writings, he had a treatment for frostbite called Guizi Tang. This was a tea that included jujube fruit, licorice root, cinnamon, ginger, black pepper, and white peony root. So those are the things that we're gonna be putting in our dumplings today. So I'm gonna start by grinding up some licorice root, black pepper, and cinnamon into as fine a powder as I can. And then we're also gonna add ginger and jujube fruit, and that's all gonna be mixed up with chopped mud. So here we go, smash, smash. Once again, the ancient recipe's favorite tool. Dumplings very quickly grew in popularity, even showing up in texts as early as 580. Dumplings have been used in all different cultures as a great way to stretch meat. As you mix your meat with veggies and seasonings, and then you put it in little dough parcels and boom, meat for everyone. We couldn't find white peony root, but I feel like we're most of the way there. Jujube fruit is a really cool fruit. It's, um, it's really sweet and tart, and a lot of people call it a Chinese date, but it also is supposed to have a lot of health benefits, like it helps with depression and anxiety. So I can see why it would be useful here. Okay, now that I got a good smash going with these things, I will add my ginger and jujubes. These have seeds, so I'm gonna just rip them apart and pull out the seed. They're really nice and sweet. A lot of times you can find them candied and it's a great little dessert. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little kosher salt, you know, seasoning, but also it gives us a little bit of friction to make sure we get a nice smooth paste. I'm just gonna keep mishmashing, smush it all up, and then this is gonna get mixed up with our chopped mutton. I really like the, the visual of Dr. Zhang Zhengxing, you know, walking through his town, pa passing out dumplings. Who wouldn't like that guy? I wish we could do that now, just walk around, and then people dumplings. Okay. Should we switch to a gift smash? Gift smash. Yeah, you know, have a smash. Gift smash. I'll have a sip of coffee. <laughs> Sit back, relax. Did you know that in China, people have like little dumpling parties? Everybody gets together, they make dumplings together. So it only makes sense that we're doing this together. Okay, thank you, gift smash. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix up this paste with some mutton and that is our filling. Okay, fun jujube fact. Jujube is one of the most prominent figures in RuPaul's Drag Race. Jujube, if you're watching this, thank you for your support. Okay. So let me get this paste in here. We're gonna mix this up. It already smells very spicy. I'm getting a lot of cinnamon and a lot of ginger. It's got good Christmas vibes. Okay, so we'll just mix this up and then we will return to our dough, which is nicely rested now. I actually think I'm gonna use my hands and make sure that we get that spice paste evenly incorporated. Okay, that feels good. All right, it's time to make these. My filling is done, my dough is rested, so now is the fun part, we're gonna make our wrappers. Okay, so to make this easy for us, we're gonna take this dough and divide it into three, and then we're gonna roll those three into one inch logs. You know, I really love using a scale, but uh, you know, we can also just trust ourselves. Portion, portion. 
Okay, so what I like to do when I am just eyeballing, sometimes I find it easier to tell if it's even through feeling instead of by seeing. So this guy feels a little small, and now we're all there. Now, keep the portion of dough that you're not working on covered because it will dry out. Now this dude, I'm gonna roll into a nice log. You can see how after resting, it's so soft and supple and easy to use. It's crazy what happens when you just let some dough have a little time on its own. Now I'm gonna roll this to about 12 inches and then cut them into one inch pieces. That's how we can make sure that our dumplings are about the same size. Archaeologists found dumplings entombed near Turpin, China that date back 1,700 years. Those dumplings were made of wheat flour and a meat filling, a lot like these. Okay, this feels like it's about a foot, right? Yeah. So now I'm gonna divide this into 12 portions, about one inch each. I like to go in half and then stack them. And we'll go in half again. That's four. Each one of these will make into three dumplings. But with each step, we're getting closer. Now we're gonna roll these out and fill them up. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of tapioca starch to dust my board and my hands and my pin and make sure nobody's sticking. Tapioca starch is great because it will keep it from drying out. So I'm gonna start by smushing it with my thumb, get it going, and then we're gonna roll this out. So these smaller pins are usually used for rolling dumpling wrappers like this because you have more control. And we're gonna get it going. And then the goal is to try and make the outside a little bit thinner than the inside. And when you watch videos of people who are pros doing this, it's pretty cool. They can like make these so fast. It's just a lot of practice that I don't have. Where, where'd my bowl go? <laughs> yeah, so don't be afraid of using as much starch as you need to keep these guys from sticking. That's the last thing you want, to make a stack of dumpling wrappers and then just have them stick together. Oh, so sad. Shaoza play an important role in modern Chinese New Year. Families get together and make these dumplings for New Year's Eve. We're just gonna keep rolling. We want roughly a circle. So when I do these at home, I usually will roll it into a circle as best as I can. And then I take a cookie cutter so I get a really nice even roll. And I find that that also helps you with the pleating, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna roll. It's not gonna be a perfect circle, but that's okay. A more likely origin of the shape is that these dumplings are formed in the shape of ancient Chinese money. For good luck, for the new year. One of Shang Xing's main medical texts was called Treaties on Cold Pathogenic and Miscellaneous Diseases. But it was sadly lost during all the fighting of the Three Kingdoms period in China. But luckily, it was rewritten by Chinese physicians who studied and knew his work. Okay. Now it's time to fill them. I am no pro at this. This takes lots of practice, but I'm gonna do my best. My goal is, is to not have four pleats. Apparently that's bad luck. So we're going for five or seven in like a, a big tablespoonful, like this. We'll see how this goes. Heap in tablespoonful, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of water around the edges so we can seal this up. My husband, Ham, he's really good at this, so I actually get very little practice, because when we have dumplings, he makes them. So I'm gonna start by pinching it together right here, and then we are gonna crimp. And we're crimping. One, two, three. That's good. Let's try for four on this side. Lucky number seven. One, two, three, four. Huh? We got kind of a nice little half moon situation. I shall repeat. So we have our lovely gyoza. They're not perfect, but I made them with my own hands. It's gonna take me some practice to really become a master. Now, I'm going to boil them in a traditional method that I've never tried before, so I'm really excited. We're going to add the dumplings to the boiling water, add cold water, let it come back up to a boil, add cold water, and let it come back up to a boil again. This is supposed to be a way to make sure that the dumplings are done, and it's supposed to make the texture of the wrappers really nice and chewy. So let's get in here. Okay, go for a little swim, guys. I'm just trying 
to make sure everybody has their own little space to plop into so they don't bump into each other. So now I'm gonna wait until it comes back up to a rapid boil and then I'm gonna add another little splash of cold water to bring it down and then another rapid boil and then bring it down. I also feel like this is gonna be a great way to make sure that the dumplings don't tear, you know, because we're not gonna let the bubbles ever get too vigorous so they're not gonna be like bumping into each other too much. Now I'm just gonna get in there and make sure no one's stuck to the bottom. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling everybody's loose, everyone's grooving. Okay, we're back up to a rapid boil. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cold water, bring the temperature down. Whoa, cool. And now we cover and bring it up to a boil again. This is cool. Another way you can cook gyoza is to steam it or even pan fry. Ooh, and we are back to a rolling boil. And let's add another splash of cold water. This is our last round. And when this is back up to a boil, our dumplings should be done. They look a little bit like pierogies. Everybody's got their own kind of dough filled with stuff that's boiled. A lot of people do, because it's so delicious. I'm trying to think of, if there, is there like a boiled dumpling situation in Bangladesh? I can't think of one, but I feel like there probably is. If you know, drop it in the comments. I want to know about it. All right, we're back up to a rolling boil, so that means our dumplings are ready to go. So I'm going to scoop them out, and then we shall taste. We got really nice and plump. No one exploded, which I was a little worried about. So that's good. Cool. I'm excited to taste these. Maybe I should stand outside in the cold for a little bit, get a little frostbite going, see if it cures frostbite as the legend goes. Awesome. Okay, so now it's time to taste my little dudes. Should I get in? Should I do it? You know, I can already smell all the medicinal herbs, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna taste them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm the slowest chewer ever. Whoa. Okay, that was not at all what I was expecting. The combo of these medicinal herbs have a flavor unlike I've had before. First, you get the sweetness from the jujubes. Wasn't expecting sweetness. Then you get this licorice-iness, which kind of soothes your throat. And then the pepper, the cinnamon, the ginger, it all just like warms you up right here, which is kind of wild. Like, my ears are burning. Whoa, it's crazy. Now I know why he was legendary, because this is pretty impressive. I actually feel the warmth throughout my neck and my nose feels clear, my ears feel warm. So I can see why you would think that this would help cure frostbite, for sure, for sure. But it's also delicious. I would definitely try this combo again. Maybe like mellow it out a little because it's a bit intense. I don't think I could have more than a couple of these before my whole throat feels like it's on fire. But, you know, mellow it down. It's a really cool flavor combo, so I will definitely try it again. I hope you guys give it a shot too. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe. And if there's any other dumpling that you want me to trace back to its origins, hit me up. And of course, as always, if there's an ancient or vintage recipe you want me to try out, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you next time.